1992 was a year of kings. There was the LAPD beating of Rodney King, videotaped from an apartment balcony, and the hovering coverage of TV cameras and helicopters circling the city as the public rebelled. It was nearly 25 years after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King and Bill Clinton, a child of the 60s, was campaigning to become commander-in-chief, a king among the contenders. Hold on just a minute. Here's Larry King. Hello? Then there was Larry King, who was anointed as the father of talk show democracy because TV viewers could phone his program and ask the candidates questions on the air. The viewer calls to King's show was seen as a seat of a future TV democracy in which citizens could vote for a candidate or pending legislation by picking up a special remote control and voting yes or no. Taking viewer calls on Larry King's show is TV evangelist Pat Robertson, whose organization, the Christian Coalition, seeks working control of the Republican Party by 1996. I'd like to ask Mr. Robertson two quick questions. One, what he thought about the Bush quail commercials. Were they effective? Should they have had more family values on them? Also, how can you say you want a party of inclusion when you're so blatantly anti-gay? Behind the scenes and off the air, Robertson's media advisor tells Robertson how to turn around or spin the caller's question. You can talk about anything you want to. Well, I am moved. I want a kinder and gentler nation. This Bush campaign phrase was written by spin doctor and speechwriter Peggy Noonan. Because America is so infused by media that we are all spinning in a way. Uh, that it is, that it is... We're uh, embellishing our story. Uh, embellishment is okay. There's... Uh, What's not okay? Where does, uh, where does spin the begin? The disingenuous part. The, the calculating this isn't the whole truth part. If he tries to corner you on the can and do the same thing, slide off it. Go back to the inclusion. Mm. You gotta get you gotta get, expand the party and you gotta bring everybody together. You can't worry about the problems of nineteen ninety two, you gotta look ahead to ninety six. Mm -hmm. Focus on the future. I so to speak. Anyone with a home satellite TV system, like the ones you see in bars or in people's yards, could have picked up Robertson and his spin doctor chatting off air. Dish owners are able to receive two types of TV. One is the regular TV programming you normally see on cable or the broadcast networks. Is that uh, Helmstead still the next one? The other type of TV is the satellite feed. In this case, the feed of George Bush and Larry King chatting during a commercial break. Kind of weird being seen around the world. Yeah. Technology. Saddam Hussein is watching this during this. Satellite feeds are used by the networks to transmit images of news events from around the world. An event covered by the network is transmitted up into space to a satellite. The satellite receives and retransmits the image of the event back down to Earth to the network's headquarters where the video image is edited and contextualized as television. The home satellite dish owner can watch regular TV, or they can tune in the satellite feed and see the event before it has been packaged by the networks as television. In 1992, I bought a couple of satellite dishes and spent the entire year flipping through the channels looking for feeds. I'd lock onto a satellite and go channel by channel through its transmission, recording the feeds. Then I would move on to the next satellite and the next one, and the next one. By the end of the year, I'd recorded more than 500 hours of feeds. Don't put a lot of that carbogen. What is this? Are we on the national...
Can we turn that off? I don't want to be on national television being Mr. Um, Madoff. We're just turning the camera away from him, so you can be Some of the feed guests knew, and some didn't know, their images were being broadcast, unscrambled and visible, to over three and a half million dish owners across North America. Those who knew they were being watched attempted to stay out of satellite TV's wide frame. But after spending hours a day inside of a television studio, television had become their home. Nineteen ninety one and ninety two had been years of political extremes for George Bush. After the Gulf War in nineteen ninety one, he had the highest approval rating of any president in modern history. But as the US economy fell, so did Bush's ratings and his health. He and the First Lady Barbara Bush developed a thyroid condition known as Graves' disease. As Bush's ratings fell further, he decided to appear on Larry King's show. His appearance marked the first time a U.S. president had been on a call and talk show in over 15 years. You feeling well, by the way? Yeah. Are you feeling well? You're good. You're lucky. You're running still and played tennis yesterday. What is that disease you had? Um, um, what are they? They they drug treat it, right? Take a take a drug every single morning, little blue and synthroid or something. And it wasn't hard. It's what the it's what the thyroid does to make your heart fibrillate, which has been very good. Now, I took Halcyon for a long time after my heart surgery. Are you off the it's the best sleeping pill in the world, but not daily. No, oh no. Okay. Now it's gonna take a bad ride. Halcyon had gotten such a bad rap that its product license in Britain was provisionally withdrawn. Some users of the drug complained of amnesia, anxiety, delusions, and hostility. When Bush started the election year, he was taking a sedative during a visit to Japan when he fainted and threw up on the Japanese prime minister. For Bush, the image of the event could have been devastating. News stories of Jimmy Carter's fainting created a symbol of a failed president. It haunted Carter throughout his campaign and helped Ronald Reagan reach the White House. The first minute of Bush's fainting episode and the reaction of the frightened dinner guest was not released by the networks and is not seen here. Only this footage after the initial fainting was made public. Newsweek magazine published a story about the event with photographs from the censored Bush fainting episode, but the photographs obscured the view of the president's face. All traces of Bush's nauseating performance would be cleaned up by the White House television crew. Even this mantle photo of Bush's face next to a white baby's blanket may have looked too much like his face in Barbara's white napkin in Japan. You want to take one of the, Anna? You got it. Do whatever you need to do. So to speak. Okay. This is the White House television studio, the satellite TV hub, which the president used to make news. From the White House studio, Bush would go up on a satellite give a five-minute interview with a local news anchor, disconnect, hook up with another local news anchor, give an interview, disconnect, hook up with another one, and do this again and again and again. This type of satellite whistle-stop campaigning is called the satellite tour. This is a technician at the White House hooking up with TV stations in South Carolina and Florida for a satellite tour by Barbara Bush. Channel 4, do you read us in Washington? WYFF. Come in, come in. Remember that every single man, woman, and child in the state of South Carolina awakens to a freer, safer world because of George Bush. WIS, do you hear us in Washington? I would remind people that every single morning we all awaken to a safer, freer world because of George Bush.
WCBD, do you hear us in Washington? And Nicole, I would remind you and the people of Florence that all of us awaken every single day to a freer, safer world because of George Bush. WCSC, do you read us in Washington? They themselves awaken every single day to a freer, safer world because of George Bush. Campaigning via the satellite tour allowed the candidates to cover long distances. But there was another major benefit. They could bypass the national TV networks. There was no need to feed through the TV network center and on to the local stations. The campaign was now the center and its own television network. This is great. I love these. Can we do any more? Can we do some mail? We do those two mail. I'm going to do some more in Florida and Texas. Col Have we done all of Colorado today? Yeah, we've got one more Today. Another way the candidates made news was by creating their own TV news stories called the video news release. The video news release was given free of charge to local TV stations. Sent via satellite by the candidate, the video news release consisted of a campaign produced TV news segment, complete with intro text for the local TV anchor to read and a news story edited by the campaign. I feel I have the experience and leadership to take America in new directions. One new direction, Job Training 2000, Mr. Bush's plan to retrain blue-collar workers and the unemployed for new job opportunities. The country's 11 largest business organizations endorsed... Nearly all the major candidates placed a video news release on local television, and nearly half the local TV stations which aired the releases didn't report that they had been produced by the candidate. For instance, this story's reporter, Michael Caputo, wouldn't be identified as working for the Bush campaign. Primaries March 17th. In Washington, this is Michael Caputo reporting. The campaigns had to pad out of their own pockets to produce the satellite media tours and video news releases. But their best and cheapest way of making news was through the TV talk shows. And the candidate's talk show of choice was CNN's Larry King Live, which made the front page of the New York Times 57 times during the election year. Before Al Gore was famous, Tammy, <laughs> he, on his book tour, he drove over to the Mutual Network all by himself, came up in that great Crystal City elevator. I still remember the day I became famous. Yeah. When your column in USA Today came in. On that thing. That book. <laughs> I always remember the card you sent me. For the networks, making news meant making profits, as the candidates made nearly 100 talk show appearances. Tell Bill if he'd do that thing in New York, it'll be true. He's so good at this. Yeah, yeah. One of the problems with staying on a bus too long is the two of you guys are so good on media. Towards the end of the election, candidate appearances increased TV talk show ratings an average of 40%. You know what you ought to do? You ought to come out on the uh, bus. bus trip with us uh, one day. We could do a, we could do a joint uh, interview from the bus. Larry King said the campaign ratings bonanza turned the election into a TV miniseries like Roots or the Thorn Birds. We're out of time. You can invite us on the bus. Okay. Uh, we have plumb run out of time. Thanks for coming, Al. I I I'd like to invite you to come on the bus with us. 1992 was probably an historic first as a major network's advertising revenues from its political coverage made more money than it cost to report the campaign. For CNN, the election was a watershed as the network received its highest ratings since the Gulf War. But I want him to finish the thought here. That's the one break we have to hit live. It's, it's an around the world break. It's hard to believe we're being watched in 151 countries. It's scary. I go, I'm in Israel. I'm at the Wailing Wall. True story. Israel. Never been there before. There with my brother. I'm Jewish. It's my culture. Stand there as an old rabbi, dominating. He's praying. Old, a religious Jewish man. 
looks up at me and he says, what's with Perot? 